This is the best pass defense in Madden 23. No! Whether you need to get instant sacks, Dang. shut down mobile quarterbacks, <laughs> or create more turnovers, Got this is the play for you. If you want to see the two-play blitz scheme that will shut down your opponent's entire offense, stick around after the intro. The here. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable mutt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. The two defensive plays I'm going to show you today are both out of my Miami Dolphins defensive ebook. If you guys want to see more defensive plays from this, hit the like button in the comment section as always. And if you want to see the Woo! full ebook itself, I'll have links in the description if you guys want to check that out, as well as the top pinned comment. Now, this first gameplay that I'm going to show you guys, for some reason, it didn't allow me to select my playbook. I selected the Dolphins like I always do, but when I got into the game, it appeared that I had the team that I chose team's playbook which was the Washington Commanders and for some reason it didn't have any of my plays that I wanted to use. The only information I actually recognized was the double mug so I started by using that one and really had to figure out defense on the fly. So the majority of this game was me using different defenses trying to figure out what would actually work and on the first drive my opponent went right down the field on me with big pass plays pretty much every single play and scored pretty immediately. When I got into the red zone, I was just trying to find some sort of cover four so he couldn't run the ball in on the ground. The closest thing I could find was the 4-3 over cover four quarters. I had no idea what would happen, but once I pinched the defense, the alignment was just terrible. I mean, you can see the inside run lanes aren't really there, but other than that, I mean, this defense just looks like it's an abomination compared to the normal run defense that I use. I mean, there's wide outside run lanes and stuff like that, and you can see my opponent scores pretty quickly and pretty easily. Now, in the second defensive series, I dug a little bit deeper since my opponent was mostly passing the entire drive and I did find a familiar formation the 3-2 dollar. Now the play that I'm going to show you guys is going to be the DB Fire 2. Now this last year was one of the best defenses in the entire game in my opinion. It's still one of the best pass defenses in the game and I'm going to show you guys a really good blitz out of this and another play later in the video. Let me know in the comment section if you guys remember me putting out this video in the past because I know I put it out last year and I probably put it out several years in advance before that. Now one of the first things you got to know about this defense is it's strictly a pass defense. This is not a base defense. This is not something you're going to want to run on first and ten you know if you don't really know what your opponent's doing it's really going to be best safe for your opponent if they're passing the entire game like the first drive my opponent passed the entire time if you're up on the stick say third and long fourth and long uh, maybe even something like second and long if you get a sack on the first down to use this play things like that or if you're up late in the game say you're up a touchdown or two and you know your opponent has to pass but like I said this is not a great run defense eventually your opponent will start handing it off and getting inside zones and stuff like that and taking advantage to these big run lanes not only that it's also a small package so a lot of times you're cornerbacks and safeties and stuff like that will get bulldozed by blocking linemen you can try to show up these lanes pretty easily by pinching the defensive line which is d-pad to the left and down on the d-pad uh, which will bring them closer together and take away some of those inside run lanes as well as you know essentially looking like a 3-4 defense which is going to be better now to maximize this play's effectiveness with substitutions at the three defensive linemen spots you could really put three defensive tackles they're really not going to have any effect when it comes to uh, getting pass rush or doing anything as far as pass play go so you can just put your strongest uh, best run stoppers at these spots and that'll be fine when it comes to the cornerbacks and when it comes to the linebackers you're going to want to switch this up you can put safeties at the linebacker positions which is going to be helpful against the pass but it's not going to be helpful against the run so if you're thinking about using this as a little bit more of a base defense you might want to keep linebackers in which is essentially what i did because jamin davis is really fast he's like a 97 speed and kelly holcomb's like an 87 speed so i decided to use them because they're fast enough that i can use them successfully but when it comes to these outside cornerbacks or rather these slot cornerbacks on each side you really want to have your fastest cornerbacks in the slot coming off the edge whether it's your best cornerback like it is here uh, in fuller or whether it's just a you know a cheap speed backup the fastest cornerbacks should be in these spots because that's going to make the blitz that much more effective when it comes to setting up the blitz it really depends on what the offense is doing and what you're looking at on the offensive front this particular play here you can see all the receivers are pretty close to the line of scrimmage so it's really going to give me an opportunity where i can press my cornerbacks if they're out spread wide which i'll show you on the next play that's not always the best idea but on this particular play because they're in close the first step typically can be to press the dbs which is going to be wired triangle whether you're an xbox or playstation and then down on the left stick this isn't really important when it comes to the coverage cornerbacks outside as much as it is when it comes to the cornerbacks that are blitzing you want the cornerbacks that are blitzing to be down at the line of scrimmage so whether you want to press your entire defensive backfield or if you just want to walk them down to the line that's the most important part and on this particular play they're already kind of down at the line so i really just feel like pressing the dbs is going to help these receivers get off the line a lot slower which is going to help me in coverage 
The next step of this setup is really just blitzing the linebacker and hovering over the guard, but you really have to choose which linebacker is best to blitz. Now, there's a couple indicators for this. Number one, there's three receivers on the right side of the field. That should be the side that typically I'm going to want to use her. Number two, it's also the larger side of the field. So once again, I'm probably going to want to cover that side. So I'm going to choose this linebacker here, Holcomb, and I'm going to drop him down over the running back because I know I have to pull back into the area where there's going to be more receivers after the snap. If I'm expecting a run, though, I would take the other linebacker based off of the fact that if it's a run, it's probably going to be an inside zone, and I want to stack that particular gap. The next step is going to be the guest pass, which is going to be the RBR1 button and then up on the right stick. This is important because a lot of times the blitzing DBs will get in so fast. If it's a play action, they might chase the running back or something like that. You don't want them to do that. You want them to go straight to the quarterback as fast as possible. So you want to commit to the pass, which is this function here. Doing this will make the blitz come in much quicker. After that, I really just have to uh, act like I'm blitzing. I'm going to step forward or I'm going to go as far as to make contact with this guard before dropping back into coverage to the closest receiver to the line of scrimmage. Doing that will leave this guy blocking nobody. and it will definitely help get these outside cornerbacks around the edge much quicker. Now, if we watch that in real time, you can see how quickly I get on this guy and I'm off this guy and I'm in coverage. This is not something you want to stay at home. You don't want to get trapped on this block because a lot of times that will get your opponent quick, easy throws over the middle. This blitz is successful for two different reasons. Number one, the last patch was all about the tackles not being able to rotate very quickly for faster defenders. And it's still an issue, especially when it comes to 93 speed cornerbacks like Kendall Fuller. You can see right here, he doesn't rotate quick enough and he barely just gets an arm on him as he's running past straight to the quarterback as he's the first one to get in on the other side the success really comes from me pressing and releasing this guard as you can see i'm occupying a blocker that allows this guy to come off the edge if i didn't do that they typically would rotate over and pick them up so you really have two different ways to create pressure on this play and it's very consistent now in the next play you can see this is a much wider formation this is not a formation where i really would say it's best to press these cornerbacks because these outside cornerbacks can give up streaks which i'll go over in a little bit as far as deciding who to cover once again, my best coverage options are going to be the tight end, which is closest to the line of scrimmage, and somebody that's going to threaten over the middle. On this next play, you see my opponent does block the running back, which does pick up the free rusher on the left side. But on the right side, like I said, that part's completely under my control. And based off the fact that I'm still doing the same press and release tactic, you can see this cornerback comes off with no problem at all. Now, in this play here, you can see I drop back right over the middle, like I was saying, on the tight end, and we get a very easy interception, which turns into a pick six. One of the reasons that I got this interception is because I never actually touched the guard. I basically stepped forward and had him react to me, but he never got his hands on me. If he gets his hands on you, it's going to make it harder to get back into coverage. But if he doesn't touch you, it's going to make it much easier to get back into coverage because he doesn't slow you down. Based off the fact that I know my opponent is trying to attack deep middle between the safeties, one of the adjustments that I make a lot of times is I'll put this other yellow zone linebacker into a deep zone. Once again, he's in a two tight end set where he has two receivers on the left side there. I can't really affect those two receivers on the left side there. So I'm putting this deep zone here so that if one of those receivers tries to go up the middle, they will basically take care of that. And then I could drop back on these tight ends once again, which you can see is exactly what happens. Now, that's not the only weakness of this defense. You could also be weak outside. You could see right here, based off the fact that we have so much of a blitzing presence, there really isn't coverage for every receiver. The deep zone over the middle is really meant to take away any deep routes up the middle that uh, Mike Evans might run. Although the slot receiver has a blitzing quarterback in front of him, so there's really nobody there to take him away, with the exception of maybe the safety if he, t if he runs a deep route. This is something that I've had issues in the past. Even here, where my opponent is running a streak on a third and 24, or to the short side of the field you can see he gets past the cornerback pretty easily and over the top of the safety as well this is something that you can adjust your coaching adjustments put your cornerbacks like 25 yard flats and stuff like that to try to take that away you can also do over the top coverage adjustments and stuff like that but then you're just going to give up everything underneath on this next play once again the safety is responsible for that slot receiver but you can see he doesn't run a deep route he just runs a curl route which means he'll get open right in front of the safety so if that's giving issues if your coverage isn't quite where you want it to be and you want to change that up all you have to do is switch formations to the one four dime which like i said if you're running my miami dolphins defensive ebook is just the next formation over and run a play called the spinner dog three this is a cover three 
but you set it up the exact same way. The cornerbacks will be outside wide once again. The only real downside to this is a lot of times you'll be user covering over the middle by yourself, but you're gonna do the exact same setup. You're just gonna come down over the guard gap one more time, put yourself on a blitz, and then drop back post snap. This is later in the exact same game where my opponent just beat me with the curl in the flat. Now I have a seam flat in that area, and you can see we get a very different result as he covers that receiver much better. So you really can run this blitz from two different plays depending on what your favorite variation is me personally i'm starting to like the cover three a little bit more so i'm gonna go ahead and end the video there if you guys want to see more defensive videos as always make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section i have another defensive video popping up if you guys want to add another defense to your arsenal uh this is going to be the best run defense since i'm giving you the best pass defense so make sure to check that out other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below